What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the Xbox method for factoring quadratics when A does not equal one. And mathematically, this method is the exact same thing as the AC method. The only difference is how we organize our work using an X and a box, hence the name. Some kids like this method better. They like the way it's organized. They're less likely to make mistakes. And so I'm gonna show it to you because maybe that's the case for you. And we're gonna go through these five examples here the video will be time stamped up so you can skip around if you need to. And let's go ahead and jump into example one. So what are we doing when we're factoring a quadratic? We're trying to write the quadratic equal to the product of two factors, two factors multiplied together, two binomials. So one way to represent this situation is using an area model. This is where the box in Xbox comes into play. So what is two quantities multiplied together? Well, the result of two quantities being multiplied together is the same as the area of a rectangle where one of those quantities is the length and the other quantity is the width. And so that's one way we could represent this situation here. We're trying to find these two side lengths. We know the area, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And typically what we do is we can break up this rectangle so that we have these four sub rectangles and we know that the sum of these areas has to add together to be the total area, which is again equal to 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. So what we do is we can place 2x squared here. We usually place it in the top right. And what we know is that this is the product of the two first terms or the two x terms. Okay, that's the only way to get x squared is multiply a term with x and another term with x. We also know that the constant here, we usually place it in the bottom right here, is the product of the two constant terms, right? That's the only way to get a constant is to multiply the two constants and these unknown factors. And so now one thing we could do is you could do kind of a guess and check method, especially with two and three each being prime. You could say, well, two X could go here and X could go here because those multiply together to two X squared. And then I can experiment with either three and one or one and three and mix those up. And that's totally fine. That wouldn't be using the X box method. That would more so just be using kind of guess and check with an area model to factor. But if that's how you like to do it and prefer to do it, then I love that and you should do that. I like to know this Xbox method because we are gonna see some examples where the numbers get bigger. The numbers aren't prime. There are a lot of different possibilities like four and 15, for example. And so I like to have a method that is clear cut that always works. And that's what the Xbox method gives us. So here's how it works. We draw an X. And the only thing this X is going to do is organize our work. We're going to multiply A times C and put it up here. And we're going to place B down here. And again, this is exactly how the AC method works, right? A times C. That's why we call it the AC method. So what is A times C? Remember, we have AX squared plus BX plus C. So A times C is 6 for this example here. I'm going to write 6 here. And B is 7, so I'm going to write a 7 down here. And what am I trying to do with these two places here? Well, these are the numbers that multiply together to equal A times C, but add together to equal B. So we want numbers that multiply to 6, but add together to equal 7. 6 only has two pairs of factors, 6 and 1 and 3 and 2. 3 plus 2 gives me 5, 6 plus 1 does give me 7, so it's got to be 6 let me draw a better six there. It's got to be six and one. Here's what I do with these numbers. I place them in here as coefficients of these x terms. One x, which I can just write as x. I'm going to just write that as x. And it actually doesn't matter where we put those. Really cool. Works either way. I could put six x here and x here, or I could put x here and six x here. It's going to work either way. So now our final step is we want to take out the greatest common factor from each column, GCF, GCF and from each row GCF GCF and that's going to be exactly what goes in each of these spots here those GCF so let's start from this top row what is the GCF between 2x squared and 6x well the 2 and the 6 have a 2 in common and they both have an x in common so we can place that here and now we can move on to the bottom row what do x and 3 share in common well one way to think of it is nothing the other way to think of it is they kind of share a factor of 1 in common because everything has a factor of 1. So we can write a 1 here. Awesome. Now how do we move on to this column? 2x squared and x. What do those share in common? Well, just an x. And then finally this column here, 6x and 3. What do those share in common? Just a 3. And so now what we have is, boom, the factors. 2x plus 1 times x plus 3 
equals 2x squared plus 6x plus x, which is 7x plus 3. So we, not only did we find the factors, but we literally proved through this model that those two factors multiplied together do in fact equal this entire quadratic. Now I want to go show one alternate approach. Instead of taking the GCF out of every single row and column, we could just do it to one. This is what I often like to do. And then we could think about kind of multiplication. Well, this area is 2x squared. This little side length, this piece here is 2x. So what needs to go here? Well, that's whatever I multiply 2x by to get 2x squared. That's just x. So what has to go here? Well, what do I multiply x by to get x? That's 1. What do I multiply 1 by to get 3? That's 3. So that's kind of the way I prefer to do it, is just take the GCF out of like the top row or the you know, first column or whatever, and then use kind of backwards thinking about multiplication to find the rest. That's what I prefer. So our final factored form here is 2x plus 1 times x plus 3. And that's how we do the x box method. Let's try our next example. So one thing I forgot to mention in the last example is we should always be checking for a GCF before we apply this method. Is there any number we can take out or variable we can take out in front to make our life easier? And in this case, no, 4 and 15 do not share a common factor. So we got to just go ahead and start applying this X box method. So here's our area model. Here's our area model. We're trying to find two factors that multiply together to equal this. So this is going to be the area. Our top left piece is going to be 4x squared then, and that's going to be the product of the two x terms. And the bottom right piece is going to be negative 15. We have to include that sign. That's going to be the product of the two constants. Now we're going to write our x here, and we're going to find the coefficients of these x terms using the a times c and b. So a times c is what? 4 times negative 15. That's negative 60. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to equal negative 60 but add to 4. So let's think of factors of negative 60. And since this number is pretty small, and that's what we want them to add together to equal, I'm trying to think of factors that are close together. So let's see, 10 and 6, I think that's going to be it. First I thought 15 and 4, but no. 10 and 6, in particular, 10 minus 6 equals 4. So I can write a 10 here. I can write a negative 6 here. And now let's double check our work. 10 times negative 6 is negative 60, and 10 plus negative 6 is positive 4. Boom, we've just found the two magic numbers that work, and that's what we're going to place here, and it doesn't matter where we place them. If I place the 10x here or the 10x here, as long as I put 10x in one and negative 6x in the other. So now let me show kind of that second approach that I showed last time, which is first finding the GCF. I'm just going to pick this top row, take out the GCF. So 4 and 10 share a 2 in common. They're both even. And x squared and x share an x in common. And once I find this GCF, now I'm just going to think about multiplication. 2x times whatever this is equals 4x squared. So what do I multiply 2x by to get 4x squared? That's 2x. Right? 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. So then what does this have to be? What do I multiply 2x by to get negative 6x? That's negative 3. Boom. So we're just finding these side lengths using whatever method we want, thinking about either this multiplication or looking at this and taking out a GCF. But I like the multiplication way. So negative 3 times what is negative 15? We could have put a 5 here. We could have also thought about what's the GCF. Well, 10 and 15 share only a 5 in common. We can't take out an X, so it's just 5. So two different ways of thinking about it. And here are the factors. We just factored this thing. It is equal to 2X minus 3 times 2X plus 5. All right, let's try our next example. So again, first thing we're always doing, looking for a greatest common factor. Is there something I could take out from this entire quadratic? And in this case, I think there is. I think these are all divisible by 3. 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 1 is 3. So let's take the 3 out, and let's see what we're left with. It's going to be x squared, because if I put the 3 back in, I get 3x squared. Then minus, so there's two ways to think about it. One is what do I multiply 3 by to get negative 24? And that's negative 8, and that's what goes here. That's one way. And the other way to think about it is, well, what's negative 24 divided by 3? That's negative 8. So two different ways, multiplication or division. And then plus 7, boom, we just factored this thing. We factored out a 3, and now look what happened. 
we have a quadratic in here now where a equals 1. So when a equals 1, and this is why I like to show this in this, in this video, and when a equals 1, I don't think the Xbox method is that useful or necessary or efficient, right? I think instead what we can do when a equals 1, it's actually a lot easier because not only do we know that the product of the first two terms equals x squared, so these have to be x and x, and the product of the constants equals 7, right? But we also know that the constants add together to equal negative 8. That's not a relationship we know with these kinds of examples where a is not 1 because it's not just the constants being added. It's the product of the constants and these kind of like first coefficients here that's like messing up that relationship. Where here we could just look for two numbers that multiply together to equal 7 but add together to equal negative 8. And so 7 is prime. That's actually quite easy. 7 and 1 are the two factors, and since we want them to add to equal negative 8, what we have to have in here is minus 7 and minus 1. And if you don't like writing these parentheses, you could also still do an area model. You could have done this, you could have wrote x squared here, and then you could have wrote plus 7 here, and you could have thought about it this way and said, well, that means this has to be x and x. Oops, I'm picking yellow. This has to be x and x. And that means these have to multiply together to equal 7, so it has to be 7 and 1. But these need to add together to give me negative 8, so it has to be negative 1 and negative 7. You could have done that as well and arranged it in an area model. But honestly, when a equals 1, I like to just write the parentheses because I think it's pretty easy and quick and efficient. Let's try our next example here. So again, the first thing we're doing, is there a GCF? No. 13 and 5 don't share anything in common. There's not an X in all three terms. Nope, so we're going to move on, and we're going to go ahead and draw our box. And we're going to say we're looking for the product of two factors that multiply together to equal 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. So those two x terms have to multiply together to equal 5x squared, and the two constants have to multiply together to equal negative 6. And now we can write our x and we can figure out what is a times c. Well, a is 5, c is negative 6, 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. Let's write it here. And then we can write our b down here. And now I'm thinking about two numbers that multiply together to equal negative 30, but add together to equal negative 13. So let me think about this. 30, we have 3 and 10. Is that going to work? Well, 3 plus 10 gives me 13. The problem is since... The product needs to be negative. I need 1 to be negative and 1 to be positive. And if I have 10 minus 3, that's 7. And let's see, if I have negative 10 plus 3, that's negative 7. So that's actually not going to work. 15 and 2. 15 and 2, I think, is. And I need the 15 to be negative. Negative 15 plus 2. Negative 15 plus 2 is going to work. Let's write it out. Minus 15 plus 2. And another way, by the way, with, with numbers like 30, and even the last example we had where it was 60 with a ton of factors, you could, off to the side, kind of list them out. 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. I don't think 4 works, but 5 and 6 work, and that's it. Those are the pairs of factors, and you could actually list them out and visually look at them. Totally fine if you have to do that. Awesome. I think this should work, though. Negative 15 and 2 so I'm going to write that in here, minus 15x plus 2x, and now let me erase these factors to make a little bit of room, because now I want to take out the GCF. I'm going to take out the GCF of that top row, and then work backwards thinking about multiplication. So taking the GCF out of this top row, they definitely share a 5 in common. Let me use a different color than the box. I'll go back to blue. They share a 5 in common and an x in common, okay? 5x is the GCF of this top row. What do I multiply 5x by to get 5x squared? That's x. x has to go here. What do I multiply x by to get 2x? That's 2. 2 has to go here. What do I multiply 2 by to get negative 6? That's negative 3. Boom. Has to go there. And so our final factored form for this quadratic is 5x plus 2 times x minus 3. Let's go ahead and write it out. 5x plus 2 times x minus 3. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this, and hopefully you like this method. This is personally my favorite method uh, when a is not equal to 1, and it's not really easy to guess and check, like where a and c aren't both prime or both positive and prime, like the first example we saw that was kind of easy. All right, let's jump into it.
Next example, and this is actually our last example here. There's a very clear GCF. Everything has an X in it. Whenever you see stuff like this, that should immediately, alarm bells should be ringing, right? This is X to the fourth. This isn't even a quadratic, but we can factor something out and be left with a quadratic. So what can we factor out? Well, X squared, they all have two X's in them at least, right? So we could take X squared out. Uh, they all also are divisible by two. They're all even, they're divisible by two. So I think the GCF is two X squared, but here's a pro tip, good strategic point here. This leading coefficient right now is negative, makes it a lot harder to factor. We don't like factoring quadratics where the leading coefficient is negative. So instead of taking out two X squared, I'm going to take out negative two X squared. Negative two X squared is gonna make my life easier. What am I left with here? Well, I can divide each term by negative 2x squared. And that's one way I can think about it and think about, well, negative 12 over negative 2. That's 6. And then x to the fourth divided by x squared. I have two of these x's left. So that's x squared. That's one way to think about it. Or we'll do a different way for the next term. We could think about it as like the reverse of multiplication. What do I multiply negative 2x squared by to get 10x cubed. I need at least 1x. What else do I need? I actually need it to be negative so that it results in a positive. Negative times negative is positive. So I need negative 5x. And then finally, I just need a plus 1 here. Boom. Awesome. So now what we have is we took out the GCF and the result is we have this GCF times a quadratic and now we can actually do our x box method here. So we're going to draw our box. We're going to think about this quadratic as an area of some rectangle and try to find the length and the width. We know that in the top right here, I can write 6x squared. In the bottom right, I can write 1. And that actually narrows down. We know that these are going to have to be 1 and 1. So this actually might be a good guess and check example. If I was out in the wild, like at a party, given this to factor, I might guess and check instead of doing Xbox. But for this video, let's Xbox it up. All right, A times C goes up here. 6 times 1, that's 6. And then B goes down here, including the sign. I want to bring that negative along, so negative 5. What numbers multiply together to equal 6, but add together to equal negative 5? So we can, again, list out factors of 6. That's 1 and 6, and 3 and 2, and that's it. All right, so how can I combine these to equal negative 5? Well, if I need them to multiply to be a positive, then they either both have to be negative or both have to be positive. But if I need them to add together to be negative, then they both have to be negative, right? Because if they're both positive, then I'm never going to add them and get a negative number. So they both have to be negative. And what adds together to equal negative 5? That is negative 3 and negative 2. Those are the magic numbers here. Negative 3 and negative 2. Awesome. So I'm going to put negative 3x here. Those become coefficients. Negative 2x here. And now I'm going to GCF this mother up. I'm going to take the GCF out of this top row. That is 3x, right? 6 and 3, share a 3 in common. x squared and x share an x in common. And now I'm going to work backwards and think about what do I multiply 3x by to get 6x squared? Well, I need a 2 and I need an x. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Boom, quick maths. That means negative 1 has to go here. And that means this also has to be negative 1 so that we have negative and negative make a positive and so this is negative 3x and boom we just factored this thing so the final factored form is I'm gonna have to write it small here we have negative 2x squared chilling out in front and then we've just showed this quadratic can be factored as 3x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 bada boom bada bing fully factored form hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you like this xbox method I really do I think it's cool. I think it's efficient. I think kids are less likely to make mistakes than they are with the traditional AC method, and it's still mathematically valid. It's This has the same mathematical basis as the AC method. We're doing the same thing, just formatting it, structuring it, uh, modeling it in a different way. Awesome. Like the video to support me. Subscribe to my channel. Check out my channel to get more help. Leave comments below with any questions. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see you all later.